Everything you see, he touched it. Yes, today we're talking with Julius, our number one front-end developer. He's not an emperor like Ulysses are yet, but he's already conquering a lot of territory between real and virtual life. When he doesn't code, he loves to spend his time winning at Warhammer and developing his movie culture. Hey Julius. Hello Medi. How are you? I'm good. I guess so. Yes. Thanks for uh, joining us. It was pretty hard to convince you to, uh, to be on the podcast actually. I guess uh, you like to preserve your secrecy. Yeah, you need to play hard to get. Yeah, I see. And uh, maybe it's more about also not talking about your double life. Mm. And by day, you're a software developer, as I said, front-end developer. But by night, you have another activity we'll talk about later. Let's start maybe with uh, what uh, you do at Circuit. Um, first, why did you decide to join us? Well, I have been uh, friends of Saku, a radar developer, for uh, many years. And he kind of talked me into it. So, and then the idea sounded really fascinating for me because I have been a gamer for all my life. So combining physical games in a new way across the internet seemed irresistible to pass. <laughs> I see. Um, and what do you do specifically? What's your job at Circuit? So I'm a front-end developer. So I do with all the things that the end user will see. So all the boxes, buttons, texts, and those images. So I will put them in the right order and make sure that our front-end communicates with the back-end properly. Yes, and that's why everything people see, you touched it. Yes. That's fine. Um, what technology do you use? So here we use a React application, which is a front-end framework, and it's written with a TypeScript. Did you already know uh, how to code in React and TypeScript before you joined? Well, yes. I made myself fam familiar with uh, React and TypeScript uh, in the previous year. Okay. So I had some expertise in the area. Wow. That's uh, <laughs> that means a lot of expertise coming from a Finn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what were you doing before joining Surrogate, professionally speaking? Yeah, so I was studying at Alta Computer Science, and at the end of my studies, I worked it at Elisa, yeah. a Finnish telecommunication operator, where I did some uh, research, or I was part of a research group that did uh, research about the user behavior and uh, tried to implement and test different changes. And uh, in that sense, like, it make, made improvements to Elisa's web pages. Yeah. And does it help you, like, understanding the user behavior and having worked on this field, does it help you for what you're doing today? Well, yeah, in some capacity, of course, everything you do, like, learns you more skills and uh, makes you better at what you do. And so, of course, it does help, whether it be, it's a bit different field or thing that I do now than I did then. But uh, of course, there's similar similarities and I can take those skills and apply it what I do here. Yeah, you still have this uh, UX uh, yes. thing in the back of your mind. Yeah. Um, when did you learn how to code? Was it at university in Alto or before? Yeah, so I actually haven't coded anything until I went to university. And then in there, I learned through the school work to actually yeah. code different things. And so, so how did you decide to join, uh, to do computer sciences at university? Mm, I don't actually remember, but I, I always had knew, known that I wanted to go to Aldo. Well, then it wasn't Aldo, but the same school, different name. Yeah. And everyone, like my parents always said, that, oh, Julius, you're going to go there when you're big. And so I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> or like I had uh, the thought implanted in my brain that I had to go there. And then when actually the time came, I just picked a random thing. And I liked computers, I liked gaming, but I actually yeah. didn't know what uh, like computer science was. Yeah. So I just so chose that because I played games all days. So okay, and I guess <laughs> it worked quite yeah, well. Quite well. Yeah. Um, so there's something, as we mentioned, that's part of your nightlife. Yes. And was part a lot more of your life before. Mm. And it's Warhammer. Yes. So you're the number one uh, Finnish player of Warhammer, or you were until yes. very recently. We'll talk about that later. But uh, first question, how did you get into Warhammer and when did you start playing? Well, I started playing like 15 years ago, like actively. I had owned miniatures before, or my father had bought some uh, like uh, actual miniatures of like cars or something. So we did those together when I was a little small, like really small. And then uh, gradually I uh, moved to like the uh, wargaming aspect of 
like model building. Yes. For, for those who don't know, can you explain quickly what's Warhammer? Yeah, so Warhammer is like a collectible game where you buy, assemble and paint miniatures, like little little dudes, as I call them, like orcs and humans and whatever. They are all different kind of settings the games can have, and then you use them to play on a board, a bit like a very complicated chess match with uh, dice rolling and uh, moving the miniatures. And and what aspect do you like about the game? Is it the strategy or is it just the power trip of controlling little men on the board? <laughs> well, uh, more of the strategy aspect, of course, because yeah. it's quite demanding game if you want to be good at it and play yeah. against good people. So you need to like really know everything about the game and what can you do and what can you not do. But of course, it's also like a social game because we play with our like a pr play group and friends and we gather around and visit tournaments and such. So yeah. it's nice to hang out with the uh, boys. Yeah, yeah. I guess the uh, the community aspect is also very important. Yes. Um, so y you have a pretty amazing record. Uh, mm. What kind of prizes, titles did you win so far? Well, uh, the prizes here in Finland are not that great. You usually get a gift card or something worth tens of euros or something to a shop where you can buy more stuff. Yeah. But uh, I did win quite many tournaments, or I have won quite many tournaments in my uh, active gaming career of like 10 years or something. Yeah, w was there a tournament that really, uh, that was really important for you and you remember all the time? What was the biggest event you attended to? Well, here in Finland, I think the most memorable tournament I had was last year, like the biggest tournament of the year, because always, always before, or many years before, like five years in a row, the same uh, Russian guy had won it. He come from Ru Russia and beats us. But last <laughs> year I was the first Finnish person to win it in like five years, so that was, uh, that was nice. So you made the country proud. Yes. Yeah. So uh, as we said, uh, you were the number one Finnish player for a long time. Yeah. But recently mm. you got outranked by someone. Yes. What happened? Uh, I started working here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not that much time to train any train anymore. Uh, like before, I could play like uh, two or three games even a week. And how much time does a game take usually? Well, usually the whole evening. Like if you go on a like after work, you would go there and play a game. The play is like three to four hours, and then the trips. So it takes the whole whole evening basically. So yeah. Um, so uh, coming back to surrogate, yeah. War Warhammer is a real life game. So. Uh, a lot of people, myself, uh, played a lot of video games and virtual games, but you played an actual real-life game for many years. And how does this help you to create real-life games here at Surrogate now? Do you think there's something that you learned from this whole experience in Warhammer that you can take uh, take here? Well, of course, there's some, some things that can be taken from Warhammer. I, I remember when we discussed implementing Warhammer, but but then yeah. we did, I deemed it like too complicated because yeah. So maybe that gives like me a ni nice like upper limit of what can we do with the things we have now. Of course, the future can be different, but for now, like I would focus on like more uh, games that the precision is not that high, and you can somehow like emulate things and not not be like a millimeter precise things. Yeah. So that's why like using uh, robots to do maybe simpler things like football or something like that, where th where you can be a bit rough around the edges works best and I think that's something I learned from uh, yeah so you would say that for remote games uh, as we're doing here the ac like we cannot be too accurate yeah about the gameplay yeah so so if you have some nice way of controlling things but then the actual game itself doesn't really require any complicated rules rule sets or anything but the idea is like simple as uh, the football, football example is pretty nice yeah. because you just need robots and a ball, and then somehow to count the scores. Yeah. But you don't really need anything else, and the game f flows by itself. Yeah. But for example, in Warhammer, there's like billions of rules, like a hundred pages of rules that you would somehow need to implement somewhere. Yeah. And I saw you play um, uh, a weekend, and you actually use rulers, and you yeah. measure precisely the movement of your troops, and it's, as you said, mili mi uh, millimeter-based, so. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that that's a that's a good one. That's a good uh, difference mm. uh, and limit of what we can do here. Um, do you still think, though, that we could implement a kind of strategy game in uh, 
a remotely controlled strategy game with robots or cars or whatever. Yeah, but of course, it's a possibility. But you need to find the right kind of implementation of strategy where there's like no like outside rules telling you what you cannot and cannot do. You can and can and cannot do. Yeah. But rather the physical implementation would like restrict those by itself. I think yeah. then it would work quite nicely. Yeah. There's a, a nice aspect also in Warhammer, for example, it's it's so accurate, but you also use dices yeah. to emulate some uh, random randomness. The advantage of doing remotely controlled uh, games is that we don't really need dices because real life itself can be unpredictable, mm -hmm. and uh, that that could be a, a nice element uh, to uh, get some RNG into the into the game. Yeah, just letting real life happen. Yeah, of course. When you have like actually moving things, then they interact with each other in a natural way, which yeah. is random m mostly yeah um I is there uh, a dream game you'd love to see um on the surrogate uh website one day mm. have you thought about a game you'd love to create here well uh, not a specific game but some like a grand idea that takes like the whole gaming experience like out of what we have now maybe maybe like remote controlling something that we haven't like thought yet like maybe some uh, like drone racing is one thing but I think drone racing like is already pretty peaked in a that sense that you can control it by actually like a phone or a similar thing but if you actually like could control something bigger flying maybe yeah that is not as simple as few joysticks yeah like so maybe like something like that like a big plane yeah or a flying mech warrior or something yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then you would <laughs> you would need some bigger controls and not yeah. just a keyboard, but maybe maybe something like that. Yeah, that would be pretty sweet. Yeah. So uh, basically, you spend a lot of time in real life because you play in real life with Warhammer. You code real life games. You even sleep and eat in real life, which is amazing. Um, do you even have a virtual life? Yes, quite uh, colorful one, <laughs> I could say. Well. So I've been like playing video games also all my life, way before Warhammer or anything. So yes, I do have a virtual life also. Yeah. Wh what was the first game you played? Do you remember? Mm, the first. I don't know the game, but it was some. I was like really small, like a couple of years old. I played on my father's laptop. It was some. Some you like click things and something happens. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are really young. Yeah, yes, I, I was really young. Um, and then, w was there a game that really uh, influenced you, or where you spend a lot of time? What, what's your go-to game? Well, uh, about your life for the past, I don't know how many years, I've been playing World of Warcraft. So I guess that one, because I played so so many hours of it. Yes. And made a uh, lot of friends, who I interact not only in digital life but also in the real world so like uh, good friends like mo most of our friend circle is coming from the world of warcraft so okay and and uh saku also in our company is uh, part of your guild yes so and ha have you been with him in the same guild for many years or yes we had played before like uh, maybe or as soon as we got to know each other like 10 years ago yeah we started playing together wow okay. and being in a different and same guilds Ever since then, uh, what would you say is your uh, gameplay, your your uh, style of uh, of play in World of Warcraft or yes. general? Wa War of Warcraft. Even even if w in Warhammer, that's interesting actually. Are you uh, an aggressive player? Or are you more a control player who likes to secure his positions? Uh, do you take like super risky um, uh, actions, or do you plan everything? Like, wh what kind of players are you? Mm, I, I don't think the question is that simple. In different games, I play differently. In Warhammer, I like to play quite aggressively. Yeah. But in uh, World of Warcraft, you usually need to play quite uh, passively or like calculatively. So you cannot make mistakes. Yeah. So it's uh, better you perform a bit worse, but you don't make mistakes. That's like the, the first rule. Yeah. So avoiding mistakes at all costs is super important yeah. in that game. But also in uh, Warhammer mistakes can be bad but usually it's more forgiving to play a bit aggressively in that yeah. case and also it's a one uh, one versus one game yeah uh, and uh world of warcraft you're uh, with other people so you have also the team aspects and communication yeah. aspect uh how does it change for you the, the way you play 
this whole communication thing? Is it hard when you come from Warhammer and you have so much exp experience playing uh, by yourself, talking to yourself in your head and so on, and having to get with the team at that time in World of Warcraft? No, not really. Because in the end, it's, uh, it's like a, it's a solo performance on your part, but of course you need to play with your team to do the assignments that you have been assigned to. But usually if you like know the people you are playing with and trust them, you know that they will do their part so you can focus on your part. So, yeah. and so you don't really need to micromanage other people there. So. Yeah. I is there uh, an expansion that you really liked on World of Warcraft or a moment you remember a game or maybe a raid or an instance or whatever that really uh, marked you? I think the current expansion in uh, personal like achievements was the best for me because I tried really hard in the beginning of the expansion to yeah. push world ranks with my guild or the guild I was in then and we did manage we did pretty good for what we like made gold for ourselves yeah. so that was pretty nice feeling when we finally made it yeah yeah I guess so and in the team it's always when you are in the, this kind of flow state and everything happens well yeah and you win uh, like it's always gorgeous moments it's yeah yeah um, there is another passion of yours that we haven't uh, mentioned uh, really uh, yet. Um, it's uh, your passion for movies. You are actually that's the one thing people told me when I joined the company, and uh, you joined around the same time, but they knew you already. It's that you have a huge movie culture. Uh, so again, w w do you do you remember when it started or when you started to become serious about movies, or is it just something you already did, like you you've already always done? Sorry. Like just watching movies all the time and getting more and more into a new uh, new kind of movies, foreign movies, and so on. Yeah, I remember when I was like fifteen, around fifteen, I I got movie ticket from my parents, yeah. and they, they they didn't like limit anything, so I could go watch as many movies I wanted, basically. Yeah. So at that time, I I watched a lot of movies. I went to see a lot of movies al alone or with my friends. So it was a pass, you mean, or? Just uh, that no, that okay. like, like you can pre-purchase those tickets okay, and okay. like ex exchange them. So I just basically had an unlimited amount of those. Yeah, they just told you just go to the movie wherever uh, you want and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. After that, it has always been like a thing to go to movies. So I, I know many people don't want to go movies because it's expensive or burdensome or something. But I really like the experience of going to the movies. Yeah. So I would I would much rather go and see the movie in the big screen than watch it at home. So. Like that's a kind of a ritual for me to go go to a movie and have something to eat and watch the movie and then think about it. Yeah. So how did you react uh, with the uh, rise of Netflix? Did it change your habits or not at all? Not really. Or uh, I do have a Netflix subs subscription that I use sometimes. Yeah. But usually the movies that come there are not that interesting. Or there's of course there are like a few a year that come directly to Netflix. Yeah. And usually, but all the other movies I usually have seen already in the big screen or somewhere else. So then I seldomly watch them again from Netflix. Yeah. And how do you see um, in in this aspect the, the future of entertainment? Because w we used to go a lot to movies and now we're people consume more and more movies at home mm. and so on. And th this real life aspect of uh, uh, enjoying um, entertainment, like do you think that everything is gonna be through screens at home or do you think that at some point we're going to see uh, uh, a resurgence or just a, a new uh, uh, rise and increase of uh, uh, people's willing to go to, to outside of their home to, to enjoy stuff? Well, I think the movie theaters are already been adapting to that change a couple of years. So now they are more selling experiences, not, yeah. not the movies actually, or the, but uh, like different options have been available like movies where you can have a beer or have a f have food in it yeah or like the premium uh, lounge places where you have like a couch where you yeah. can l lay and such so they are really like trying to bring people out of their homes as you said to the movies with some like different attractions which is not not the movie but the experience of going to the movies in a more enjoyable way what kind of movies do you go to uh, to see because you, you, you watch almost everything that's that's kind of amazing but wh what do you enjoy the most and what kind of movies do you usually think that oh I need to go to see this one specifically well usually the movies that I most enjoy are like s if you can say smart movies that have some idea behind it 
and the either the plot or the characters are, are more interesting to me or in in general and of course if if the movie is built well it doesn't really matter what it is but if the like the message and the that you have to a bit think a bit when you watch the movie so those like cheap comedies that you just play for laugh are not uh, not my favorite movies but of course they have a time and place and if you are in a right mindset you can of course enjoy them but uh not always yeah uh, uh, what are the like, maybe two three uh movies recently that uh, you really liked and that blew your mind maybe mm, blew my mind mm, of course the start of the year is all always like a pr- bit dry because all the good movies come at the end of the year because of, of the yeah. average season but luckily or unluckily in finland the movies come like two or three months late yeah in some cases so uh i actually got to see parasite in the movie theaters like a month ago maybe yeah. and that was of course very nice and uh the movie in 1917 the war movie yeah. from the technical aspect was really nice in my opinion maybe not uh, or it they made it intense in moments where it, in norm, normal movies maybe wouldn't have the same intensity yeah so i really like that in that aspect also so yeah so you would say for the technicity of the movie would yeah. be uh, 1917 and yeah. for the plot and maybe the characters yeah maybe more parasite yes okay that's uh good stuff uh I heard you're currently looking for an apartment. Yes. Are you still looking for something because uh, the community might help you? Mm, not actually. I I think I have one select already <laughs> yesterday. So, but it's uh, I still need to sign some papers and uh, take a final yeah. look at it. But hopefully, starting hopefully. starting your new life then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty sweet. What kind of setup are you gonna install there? Are you going to do like all the new engineers do usually they just buy this huge flat screen and consoles and um super amazing uh pc setup i i guess you already have a bunch of that yeah i i have a big big tv that i yeah. could watch movies but i seldom live do i may, maybe few mu- movies a year but maybe now more if i have a more space to set up like a couches and stuff yeah to be more uh comfortable watching movies from home Uh, are you going to try some uh, smart home stuff? Because we have a lot of Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and all sorts of hardware around here, and some people have installed like pretty sophisticated setups at home. Are you going to do that also with LEDs integration, music integration, Alexa, or stuff like that? Probably no. I'm I'm quite old-fashioned in that sense that I and I don't really have any gadget that I would feel the need to integrate yeah. them to my uh, to internet or to my phone or something. But when you talk about old-fashioned, do you mean? cigar and whiskey kind of old-fashioned no i'm talking more about uh, tolkien and dragons and orcs kind of old-fashioned what really <laughs> yes <laughs> well then fly away with your dragons what can i tell you thanks for having me yeah.